Hello everyone. Today I want to show you this Chocobox based multi item sorting system I made. So this is based on a concept by Mind the Fub. I made this for my single player world because I was kind of getting fed up and annoyed. Slow multi item sorting systems. So I tried to make my own design and I think the outcome was really interesting. So I'm going to show it off today. So the way this works is it doesn't actually sort items, it only sorts shocker boxes. So this entire thing is pretty much just a glorified shocker box sorter. You take your boxes, preferably four, and input them. They then get taken. And at this point in time, those boxes that you saw there a second ago, they are mixed, which means there's more than one type of item per shocker box. And the choker box sorter here, or the encoder, can only handle choker boxes with uh, a single item in them, or a single item type in them, if you want it to be any good for item sorting. That's why the items as the mix boxes can go to this choker box splitter here. This is Data's Dustless Ideal Output Splitter. This is not made by me. It can take choker boxes and pretty much do exactly what I just said, just take mix boxes and then split them into their individual components really useful for a lot of different sorting contraptions. The reason there's like four of these, each one of these double slices here is one of them. The reason there's four of them is for the aforementioned speed. This way this can reach a theoretical maximum speed of 32,000 items an hour, which is about four times faster than what you usually have in multi-item sorting systems. Although it does have to be said that it's a theoretical speed. Um, in reality, in my survival world, where I've already tested this, the system sorts items between 20 to 25,000 items an hour which is still pretty much faster than anything I've ever seen. And there's also a way to sort the items by bypassing the splitter entirely, which is significantly quicker. Anyways, the way this works is the system takes one of these shocker boxes that now only has a single item type in it, and then configures this uh, item filter here in this hover my card, which then goes and checks for one of these encoder chests. If the item is found in any of the encoder chests, the item just gets put into that particular slice and ends up being sorted. This entire encoder takes about 11 seconds to sort a single shocker box. So at normal sorting operations, it should always pretty much permanently be able to keep up with the splitter. At the end here, the shocker boxes get merged again with their item that was taken out of them, put up this drop in elevator and then across right here into uh, Summers' choker box unloader, which then takes the choker boxes and unloads them into the individual slices. You can also skip this step, but I'm going to show how that works in a second. Now, the empty choker boxes then end up being looped back and back up into the splitter, because the splitter, and this is probably one of the main disadvantages of the system, eats an absolute insane amount of choker boxes. Especially when you're sorting a lot of different items, you are definitely going to need a lot of this, which is why the system is definitely it's very needed to have a shocker box farm for this, otherwise you are probably going to run out of them very soon. Now, it does recycle the empty boxes, as you can see, so you don't lose them, but you do need them at the beginning, which can take a while. Now, as I've already said earlier, the system can also sort items individually. So, like, say for example, you've come back from a mining trip here, and you have a whole bunch of junk inventory, and uh, you could, technically speaking, just dump all of this in here now, and have it be split, but that would be incredibly slow. A significantly faster way of doing this, like this, with a small amount of items, is to just bypass the splitter entirely, and split the items manually, yourself. In this case, we also don't want them unloaded, which is just what this lever is for here. And then you can just take the items and individually drop them away. That way the items will not end up actually getting unloaded. And we'll just end in a shocker box form around this chest here. This takes all again 11 seconds per shocker box, and as you can see, it's not getting unloaded, it's just being put into this chest column here. Now this is actually kind of useful because as you can see there's only about 4 double chests of capacity per category. So it is pretty necessary that you do some upkeep with these chests every once in a while. This is not designed as a bulk storage in mind. You really do need to come in there and every once in a while um, configure all the items that are in here, 
consolidate them into a shocker box and put them back in again so you don't run out of space. However, the system can also help with that. It can also sort completely fill shocker boxes like this. It don't actually need the bypass unloader for this because it can detect completely filled shocker boxes and always bypass them. However, it does have to be said you always need to bypass the splitter if you want to sort a full shocker box because otherwise it's just going to get unloaded and loaded again and that would take absolutely forever. Put it like this. Just put the shocker box in. An entire shocker box full of items. Get sorted in about 11 seconds. For a couple of seconds, there you go. There it is. Now, one of the maybe a little bit weird use cases of the system is probably sorting categorized shocker boxes like this. So this is my redstone box, say for example. And I can assign an item to the first slot of the shocker box that is custom. And then have the entire shocker box be inputted into that particular slice. So in this case, you don't want it unloaded, you don't want it split. So you always have to make sure that this is in the correct configuration before you start one of the sorting cycles. And then you can input it. And the way this works is you can just have custom filter items for one of the encoder chests and therefore can set custom filters for mixed boxes like this that can be directly fully sorted into one of the chests, which can be really useful, especially for organizing in a chest storage. Now, if there, this, item, uh, this system can sort every item in the game, that's like 700 plus items by now. The only items it can't sort are 16 stackable items because they don't work with the here signal strength based encoder chests. And unstackable items for obvious reasons, although you can probably take the output and put it in a lace holder if you're really after that sort of stuff as well. Beyond that, if an item is not configured in one of the encoder chests just yet, it will end up in the overflow, like here. And the overflow also has an encoder chest at the bottom that tells you exactly which items has not been put into the system anywhere or hasn't been found anywhere. And you can go in to one of the encoder chests, swap out one of the items directly like this. Make sure you do it by directly left clicking on it. You can take out two of these encoder items and now you've configured the items to the items order. Make sure that these items, whenever you have a couple of them loose laying around, just throw them away because if they ever end up in the sorting system and the encoder part specifically, it just breaks pretty catastrophically. Or, uh, trust me, it's not fun to reset it back up again. It completely empties all of the encoder chests, which, like that, which is not very fun. So just if you have any of them loose laying around, just throw them out. Never put them in a shocker box or in a chest somewhere. Maybe only have like a single hidden shocker box somewhere where you do actually sort all of the filter items. That also goes for the filter items for the minecarts at the bottom here. Now then you can just take the items again. And since I'm lazy right now, I'm just going to input a new individual. I didn't even do that. Well, we can do that anyways. And then we can put the logs in there as well. The azalea bushes. And they can be sorted off as well. Now, the first slot of this chest also always has to have an empty white chocolate box in it. This is so the system doesn't end up breaking if you accidentally input an empty shocker box like this. It will just take the shocker box and sort that instead, like as you can see there. To make sure that doesn't break, there needs to be a shocker box in the slot. It will always be returned to the chest as well, so you don't need to worry about it not being there anymore. It always comes back as well. The shocker box, the empty one, just ready to go, returns back to the backlog here of shocker boxes. Beyond that point, I've been using this in my survival world for a relatively decent amount of time now and I've not really found any major bugs that would have broken this, although uh, it is a bit tricky to get used to as we do need to think about what you're going to sort when as you do need to always go through the shocker boxes as an intermediate. But once you've gotten used to this, the system can sort items incredibly, incredibly quickly, which I find very nice. A couple of things to watch out for though. This rail line in the back here that returns the filter cards or always needs to be unobstructed. That also means there shouldn't be any items somehow falling on it, like mob drops or something, and mobs shouldn't be able to walk on it, so just block it off. It goes for pretty much any part of exposed rail lines like this. And these, this dropper elevator here sometimes spazzes out a bit and doesn't get updated. 
especially when you copy this using a structure file or I'm assuming also a Lightmatica, which means if you end up copying this somehow every once in a while, especially when you update your world and stuff like that, I would go in and replace all of these rails to pretty much just reset the droppers a bit. Sometimes they can get clogged up otherwise, which would result in, well, the system wouldn't be able to sort items anymore. And you have to go in and clean it out manually, which isn't very fun. Yeah, beyond that, I'm going to try to leave a world download down in the description. I'm also going to put all of the sources for all of the contraptions uh, in this that are not mine, like for example the splitter, then the un instant dropper line at the top here also isn't by me, and uh, the unloader here is also not by me. I'm going to leave them down there for you to check out as well. And that's it. I hope you had fun watching this video. I hope you have a nice rest of your day, and uh, goodbye.